for Turkey. So Turkey wants to go to war with Syria. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm not sure why Turkey was admitted into the uh, NATO. But um, whatever the reason is, it was like the sleepy effect. See, now the Bushes went into the Middle East, but nobody wants to go in this time. So the whole uh, gamut of experiences recently, this, this spring revolution or whatever, um, was a way of creating an environment so that the West and NATO will be forced to go in. We haven't seen the ultimate yet in which they start attacking our interests and making it, you know, very hostile and we have to go in. But the whole bottom line is that the Middle East is a dangerous place. Um, I'm going to make another video to explain that, but, um, you know, the Roman Empire or the, or the Catholic Church, the Day Crusades went through the Middle East and um, they, they failed big times. And it seems to me that they're thinking in terms of the type of fight they executed then, the type of military hardware and assets that NATO has is going to make a different fight, but it's the same fight. You can't win in the Middle East. God is protecting these Arabs. Now, when uh, the Catholic Church was going with the Crusades, the Amas army and so on, they're going in, they have to fight their way in. They're losing the food, they're losing men. They're going to go to the fight they're going to. And then they're coming back, but they have to fight again. So when they're going with maybe 100,000 men, maybe 5,000 will come back. I'm just trying to, you know, illustrate a point. I don't know the exact number, so. Um, so until um, Turkey. Turkey basically sent its jet out into the Syrian airspace. Because remember, uh, the rebels are operating out of Turkey and then some other uh, international organizations coordinating the, uh, the rebels from Turkey and so on. So Turkey seemed to have a vested interest in starting something to um, get rid of Assad. And so they sent a plane into the airspace and uh, they were shot down. They say it was out of the airspace. As long as they violated the airspace, it's fair again. We don't know what intelligence they have. I recall when um, the South Korean, I think it was, aircraft went into the Soviet space and they blasted it out of the sky and then people were arguing it was out of the area, but it was, uh, you know, and I mean, hundreds of people lost their lives. Um, it was a, a much more valuable, uh, a more expensive thing, but yet uh, there was no war. So it seems to me that uh, Turkey is being used by the Antichrist to get NATO and the West into it. Now, let's look at Libya. Now, the Libya campaign was a success, and people are saying this is the type of campaign you need to conduct maybe in Iran and in, and in uh, Syria. But I don't know if folks are looking at this. Uh, all the nations that participated in this uh, Libya conflict, see what happened to the economies? The economy started to slip. Europe hasn't recovered yet, and others are working to uh, go back to where they had been, I believe. So, um, with Turkey now, Turkey trying to get this um, uh, fight going and they're going to call on NATO to have them going. I mean, why can't they say, well, okay, we shut them up, we're pay for a plane and, and compensate the family of the power. No, they, they want a war. But I believe that they're going to be alone in this war. I don't think NATO is really interested in a war right now, especially since it's not anything consequential. And um, I don't think Turkey has any big sell assets. And, uh, you know, they're going to end up with a war just like. Um, Iran and, and Iraq have still made a lot of divide, a lot of damage, and, and nothing has changed. Uh, if anything changes, it's going to be just like the others, very fickle, very unstable, uh, a lot of damage, and so on. And so, um, you know, when I look through the scriptures and so forth, um, this seems to give Turkey the, the feeling as though they're important. Now we have the the Turks and the Ottoman Empire, and I did that in history, but I'm not too clear on, you know, where it went. But they seem to think that, or people are, are biblical commentators are saying that uh, Turkey is important. I, I looked up commentaries like uh, um, Albert Barnes, Notes in the Bible, Adam Clark, Commentary in the Bible, Darby, John Darby, Synapsis, uh, Geneva Bible Translation Notes, John Gill Exposition of the Entire Bible, Henry Matthew Commentary in the Whole Bible, uh, Jameson, Fossett, and Brown Commentary, uh, P. 
Hill and Bailey, which commentary in the Old Testament, Myers, uh, through the Bible by day by day by uh, Meyer, Matthew Henry, concise commentary, um, the summarized Bible, the treasure of scripture knowledge. And they seem to suggest that um, Turkey is the fulfillment of the promise that God made to uh, Abraham concerning his son Ishmael. And in Genesis chapter 17, verse 20, it says, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. So they're saying that this is uh, talking about fulfillment in Turkey. Furthermore, in Daniel 1, um, the, um, the beasts in Daniel, the four beasts, the lion, the leopard, the bear, and the nondescript beast with ten horns, and there was one that uprooted three and, and replaced it. People are saying that this is Turkey, and perhaps Turkey went ahead and tried to exterminate the uh, Armenians, because it says that this same this same horn that replaced the other uh, three will persecute people and, and try to wear the saints and so forth. So again, they're trying to say that this is Turkey. But I think the only thing that is significant with Turkey is that perhaps the ark that now sailed from Antediluvian to the modern world rested on Mount Ararat, which they say is somewhere in Turkey. Um, however, Turkey is not Turkey. Turkey is not the Antichrist because the Antichrist that Haram represents. They're not the Antichrist because um, they are not transitioned from no other uh, sort of uh, empire. Um, so this great nation, and I remember I had a professor um, teaching Bible and uh, he was East Indian and maybe converted from Islam and so forth, or Hinduism. Um, he's trying to show that uh, Turkey with some stuff or this kind of stuff. But you know what, to make a long story short, Turkey is not important because and it's not this great nation. Uh, Daniel had a vision in Babylon and this this uh, image of the man with the head of gold and silver and bronze and iron and iron and clay. And Babylon was the golden nation. I believe that this great nation thing was fulfilled in, in, in Babylon, in modern day Iraq, because it became one of the um, empires that we know is documented. So when you talk about the Chinese dynasty and the um, the Turks and, and, and the Ottoman and all the stuff, they never really mattered much because they're not in that summary of things. We know the world went from Bolivia, um, Egypt, and even Syria to Babylon. And then from Babylon went to Middle Persia, then to Greece, then to Rome, then to Germany, and here we are today waiting for the big stone in return of the world. So I don't see why anybody should take uh, Turks, Turks or, or Turkey serious and lost out of work and destroy our economy and our recovery. I think uh, people need to advise Turkey to stand down and just take it easy because they're just trying to use NATO as it were to go into the Middle East which people are kind of skeptical of.